The crisis in Iraq is dominating the headlines with the jihadist group ISIS making big gains across the country and moving towards Baghdad. One of the big questions, of course, is what is the United States and President Obama going to do about it and can they cooperate with Iran in any way? With me is Rula Halaf, the FT's foreign editor. Rula, some really difficult choices for President Obama a decade after the U.S. first went into Iraq. What do you think he can do about the ISIS problem? I think there are two things that he has to do. One is uh, some kind of assistance in terms of counterintelligence, uh, other means in order to stop the actual offensive by ISIS. But I think, and perhaps more importantly, I think the US has been out of the picture in Iraq. Uh, and Iraqis do need outsiders to be able to help them forge a political deal. Because the real problem in Iraq today is that the Sunni community has been marginalized. And it is, in effect, in many parts of the country supporting this offensive. This is the fundamental problem, isn't it? Which is that the government of Nouri al-Maliki has been really very sectarian in its approach, very pro-Shia, marginalizing the Sunnis, and that has created a lot of the tension that there is on the ground. Yes, I think that's right. In some ways, Nur al-Maliki has been less sectarian than, than other Shia leaders, which is why the US has supported him for a long time. But in practice, he has implemented policies that have alienated the Sunni community more and more. So if you're a Sunni in Iraq today, you're thinking, right, you know, a, a Sunni dictatorship um, was ousted from power. but what? they ended up with is a Shia dictatorship. Exactly. Uh, let's, let's look at the position of Iran, because Iran clearly is very supportive of Maliki, but it's got enormously difficult relations with the US. Of course, we can look at the map here with Iran, obviously, on, on, on Iraq's uh, eastern border. How can the US and Iran work together? They've got their differences. They're working together on the nuclear file. That's the good bit of news. But of course, huge differences, for example, in Syria, where Iran is backing the Assad regime. I mean, could the US and Iran come together to promote some kind of political arrangement in Iraq, which moved Maliki to one side? Well, uh, the US has to be realistic. Iran has a lot of influence in, in Iraq and with the various Shia parties in Iraq. They're very well infiltrated with the militias and therefore the U.S. can cooperate to a certain extent with, with Iran, but in order to produce an outcome that the U.S. favors, not in order to just tell Iran, you know what, this is your sphere of influence, do with it what you want, because that could lead to even more sectarian violence rather than less. So it's, it's a very uh, delicate balance here in that the U.S. can cooperate with Iran to try to come up with a power-sharing deal for, for Iraq, for instance. It can cooperate to stop the ISIS offensive, but without uh, reaching the outcome that some of the Shia groups that Iran backs will want, which is more dominance rather than less. So what you're saying is then that the US could get involved in Iraq. It might be able to perhaps give some support to the Maliki government, the Iraqi army. It could work with Iran. But the price of that has got to be that Iraq does move towards more of a kind of power-sharing, inclusive set of arrangements, more democratic, more pluralistic. That should be the line for US policy, not to just get in on one side against the other. Absolutely. I think inclusive is the key word here. If Iraq is to remain as one state, then the politics have got to be inclusive. Otherwise, on the path that you know various Iraqi political groups are going now, Iraq will break up. Rula, thank you very much indeed.